Now here is one of the most important statements of today, today's talk. And it's from the psychologist Thomas Saas. He says, people often say that this or that person has not found himself. But the self is not something one finds, it is something one creates. That's right, folks. You create it here, and you create it now, and you create it through what you call your experience in this life. It's not given to you by a god. It's not given to you by some magical act. And it doesn't come into you, in with you when you're born. You have a spark of life that's given to you by the matrix, nature. But the soul, that thing that is really equivalent, that soul is religious, isn't it? It's a religious term. In psychological terms, it's nothing more than the self. Well, that is your creation. But you don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear that. So they're waiting for the Pope to do it. They're waiting for the religious leaders to do it, the teachers to do it. This is what I mean when I say that about the absence of being. This is where the responsibility is. This is where the power is. And this is also where the secrets of disempowerment are. But Thomas Saz wasn't the first one to say it. It's there in all the scriptures, from the Gnostic apocryphal works to the official text of the Bible. In Corinthians it says, You are the temple of God, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Christ's own words, they say in John, is the works I do, you can do, and greater. Implying what? In the Gospel of Thomas he says, When you know yourselves, then you will be known. And you will know that you are the sons of the living Father. But if you do not know yourselves, then you are in poverty, and you are poverty. There it is. And so don't look at the world in the state of decay and be pointing some elusive Illuminati. They're just to more toxic versions of what these teachers are talking about. Origen, the church father, said, You yourself are even another little world, and have within you the sun and the moon and also the stars. It's been said in a hundred different ways, a thousand different ways, right across the globe. The great author Marcel Proust said it this way, We don't receive wisdom. We must discover it for ourselves after a journey that no one can take for us or spare us. So the question then arises, okay Michael, you know, you've done enough damage. How do we know, how do we find out about the self then? Well, that's where the trick comes. That's where we really need to sit down and, and discuss this. Because actually, this, the, to come upon the self is not remotely connected to any kind of learning that we've ever been taught. After all, remember Socrates said that there is no such thing as learning, there's only remembering. Now, he might have been talking about reincarnation, but he might have been also talking about the fact that you already are perfect, you already have it within you, and even if you think you're learning something, it's because you're bringing it out from inside yourself. But even leaving that aside for a moment, what do I mean when I say it's not connected to the other kinds of learning? Well, what are the other kinds of learning? Jumping through hoops? Gaining, acquiring, acqu being acquisitive? Territorializing the knowledge, like a dog territorializes a lamppost and then saying, I, it belongs to me, I'm it, I'm the degree. Here's my degree here. I, uh, no, my degree is nailed to the front of my chest and the target on the back. I'm completely sold. All the ways that we gain official knowledge and for the reasons we gain it, selfhood has nothing to do with that. You come upon the self by a completely different process that is known as apophatic process, through apophatic knowledge, or negation is a more common word, which means that you have to discover everything that is not the self. <sighs> now you have to become that detective, that Sherlock Holmes, you have to become completely critical and profoundly negative. No, oh, don't say that, Michael, that's a terrible word to use. Because we're under psychic dictatorship and many words have been misunderstood. Many words have been misrepresented to us. In the true spiritual path, it is letting go. It is deconstruction that is the power, that is the jet fuel. Not acquiring and having and wanting and owning like you do in the world. It is something completely different. It's the ability to discover what is not. Nobody said it better than Krishnamurti. He said, until the false is seen as the false, truth is not. Because truth isn't going to come to you. It's not going to come to the toxic person. See, you don't own it. It comes to you when it damn well feels like it. When you're pure and, uh, and unsodden enough. And even then, even after, I'm not even giving any guarantees here. Even after you've done this deconstructive work, it may remain elusive. But it's never going to come until you do that work. 
That's the preparatory work and every shaman of credibility knows that. And anybody else who tells you different, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not part of the truth. So Arthur Conan Doyle said it this way, once you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. So again, negation. This actually, a, we, we can do it by the way, there's a part of our mind quite adapted to this. Once we get rolling with it, it's very easy to do. Some people have a head start, <coughs> the Virgos, you didn't hear that. Some people have a head start and others take a little bit more time. Ultimately, I've expressed it in other ways, this deconstructive model or whatever, and I have often referred to it as an anarchy of the mind. You know, we've been trying to talk here about enslavement and freedom, right? Well, what is the greater freedom than attitudinal freedom? Do you know that some of the freest men have been locked up in dungeons for as long as 18 years and more? Read Byron's Prisoner of Shion. Read the story of Mikhail Bakunin and others who've been incarcerated but were still here, free, attitudinally, could not be controlled, could not be taken down. Now, this deconstructive process cannot happen until you have fallen deeply in love with the word no. Like I said, you have to become profoundly negative in the true meaning of that word. Profoundly critical, profoundly judgmental. Then what awakens within you is the spirit of rebellion. It's there, it's in us. And in fact, we're in the age, we're in the countdown now, a so-called age of awakening. That is very much about the reawakening of this so-called spirit of contradiction or spirit of rebellion. In fact, if you don't have it, I can't say too much about what the future might hold. And as a matter of fact, if you go into depth, you'll find that the spirit of rebellion, when you look at the thing astrologically and also esoterically, is actually the equivalent of what the Christians have always referred to as the Holy Spirit. That the self, the spirit of rebellion, and the Holy Spirit are identical, by the way. We don't have time to go into it now, but I have an article on the Michael Tassarin website uh, entitled 2012 Shiva, the Holy Spirit uh, and the Age of Aquarius, where we lay out those points.